Hello and welcome to this video that will walk you through the process of configuring Azure Service Bus in order to integrate between your common data service or Dynamics 365 instance and an on-premise SQL Server. There are various ways of implementing the same functionality and using Azure Service Bus might not be the easiest one, but there are cases where products such as on-premise data gateway are not available to all organizations. The following slide shows you the required steps for configuring an Azure Service Bus in order to be integrated between your CDS and an on-premise SQL Server. These steps include the creation of your SQL Server database and objects, creation of an Azure Service Bus resource in Azure, development of the plugin that we'll call the Azure Service Bus, configuration of the endpoint in CDS, and creation of this listener application. You can download the source code for this implementation from my GitHub report repository shown on the slide. Click on the folder called ASB Listener to download the files. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the solution in action. The logic that is implemented in this demonstration is when an account record is created in your CDS environment, it will call the Azure Service Bus in order to update an on-premise SQL database that a new record is created. The first thing we will show is the SQL database. In here you will see that we created three tables, an accounts table, a contacts table, and a system users table. We will only be using the accounts table for this demonstration. We also created a couple of stored procedures for the create account and update account. And finally, we created a user record to handle the permissions for the tables and the store procedures. Next, we'll take a look at the creation of the Azure Service Bus. We have a shortcut to the Azure Service Bus that we created in our dashboard. But if it's not already there, we can navigate to all services and then click on Service Bus from there. Since we do not see the Service Bus in our list of services, we can click on All Services, select Integration, and then see that the Service Bus service is available for us there. When we create a new Service Bus originally, We'll need to select a subscription, a resource group, the location, and the pricing tier, as with any of the other Azure resources. Creation of the service bus usually takes a few minutes. In our case, we've created a service bus called CDX WDX. I'm going to click on the service bus, and it will take me to the configuration. The only thing that has to be configured in the service bus is the shared access policy. When a new service bus is created, a default shared access policy is available called Root Manage Shared Access Key, and it provides the ability to manage, send, and listen. For our purpose, since we only need to have send and listen, we create a new shared access policy called Read and Write Access Policy. When we click on the Read and Write Access Policy, and set the available <coughs> claims to set and listen, we can see that the primary key, secondary key, and primary and secondary connection strings are available. We'll need those to configure the service endpoint in CDS. To configure the service endpoint in CDS, we use the plugin registration tool to create a new service endpoint. When we register a new service endpoint, we start with the connection string from the service bus in Azure and click on the register new service endpoint, where we paste it in the text area that it will ask us for the connection information. For our purpose, we already have an Azure service bus created, but let's take a look at how it would work in order to create a new one. I would copy my connection string from my service bus in Azure 
navigate back to my plugin registration tool, select register new service endpoint, click on the select, let's start with the connection string, and paste the connection string there. It will pop up a new service registration with information from my connection string. In our case, we already have a service endpoint that we configured. We will use a two-way designation type, specify a path, and append the container name to the end of the namespace address. We will also need to change the namespace from SB to HTTPS. We now need to capture the GUID of the service endpoint in order to call it from the plugin that we will develop. We can place the GUID in a variety of configuration places as we will use it from the plugin that we will st soon start developing. In order to get the GUID of the service endpoint, we click on the Properties tab and scroll down till you see the service endpoint property. We copy the GUID from there. We can pl place the GUID in the plugin configuration, an environmental variable in CDS, or a custom entity such as, ed such as the settings entity if you have portal configured. We'll skip the process of creating an environmental variable, which can be created from the Power App Solution Designer and selecting a new environmental variable. In my plugin code, I have two registered events, one for the account creation and one for the account update. For both I retrieve the account ID for the record that was created or modified and call the create account or update account logic which both will perform the same functionality. The create update account function in the logic class retrieves the endpoint ID from the service endpoint record in the plugin registration tool and calls the execute method of the Microsoft XRM SDK iService Endpoint Notification Service, which is calling the Azure Service Bus. Prior to this happening, there are a couple of things that were added to the plugin class. We added a property called Cloud Service of type iService Endpoint Notification Service and in the constructor function <coughs> we obtain the Service Endpoint Notification Service from the service provider. We then pass the, plow, the Cloud Service object from the Account class into the account logic which is which will be used when calling the Azure Service Bus. Once done of course we have to register the plugin. You can see that I already have the plugin registered for the account entity and I have two message steps here, one for the creation of the account and one for the update of the account. The final part of the puzzle is the listener console application. The application was created from scratch using some of the references from the Microsoft documentation website which demonstrated how to create a service bus application. The console application is made out of two helper classes 
one which is the class that inherits from the two-way service endpoint plugin, and the other is a SQL data manager which calls the store procedure. The app.config has the connection string to the database as well as the signature for working with the Azure service bus. We can start by writing the helper class that will connect to SQL Server and create a new account record after the connection string has been added to the connection string part of the application config file. The SQL Data Manager class which will call the SQL Store Procedures to create the update and create methods of the account records. We can see that create account adds the parameters to the SQL command and executes the store procedure. The update account does a very similar process passes the parameter and executes the store procedure. There's also a class that listens and processes incoming requests from the Azure service bus. This class has a default public function called execute which accepts a remote execution context parameter. The context parameters contain the shared variables that we pass from our plugin as well as the, the execution context that allow us to retrieve the message name to know if this is a create or an update. The create account and update account functions receive the account entity, take the necessary attributes, and call the create account of the SQL data manager class in order to store the data in SQL Server, which we have previously shown. The console application runs it as a Windows service. The solution includes a project installer class which has allowed us to install this as a Windows Service class. The main function, program.cs, allows us to install or uninstall the console application as a Windows Service. Once the Windows Service is installed by running the Visual Studio application with the install parameter, we can see the results of the running services. If we click on the project properties, we can see that we have in the command line arguments a double hyphen with install, which allows us to install the application as a service. Let's take a look at our Windows services and start the service in order for us to test that this entire process works. So now that the Azure Service Bus Listener service is running, we can go ahead and go back to our CDS environment. I'll go back to my accounts, create a new account, We'll enter a description for this account.
and I don't think we need anything else. We can enter some additional details and I'll go ahead and save and close this record. We'll go back to our SQL database. And take a look at the query. I have two pre-existing accounts. I'll execute the query again. And you will now see that my Dynamics 365 record was created. We can see the created date of today. So although this there's a lot of work involved in creating an Azure service bus, it is a very good way to allow us to implement or connect from our online CDS environment to an on-premise SQL database, especially at times when we don't have easier solutions such as using the on-premise data gateway, if that is not available. As I mentioned previously, all of this code is available in our GitHub repository and you can download it and test it for yourself. I hope this has been helpful and please feel free to contact us for any questions.